So that's the big question we're asking uh, our panel today. How much does the influence of a coach contribute to an IPL team's success? Coaching, Ajit, a lot of people have their own theories on how important it is in cricket in general. How does coaching fit in the setup of an IPL team? I mean, it's not easy. What's happened uh, because the international uh, calendar or the domestic calendar is so long for each country that you get very little time to actually work with the guys that are part of your squad or your franchisee through the course of the year. So whatever you have to do is in those six weeks or seven weeks and it's always difficult. I, the way I look at it uh, for a coach, uh, especially in the IPL, his role is to be, get the guys to prepare well because even the practice sessions as the tournament progresses because of the amount of travel that's required are so short uh, that you know there's very little that a coach can work with unless they work with the guys who are not playing. So it's about getting the preparation right, getting the practices organized, uh, you know, the man management in the dressing room, there are so mm. many overseas guys and Indian, the cultures are different. To get all that to sort of bind together, that's one of the challenges of the coaches. I mean, there's, there's no doubt uh, they, they do help some of the younger guys who are maybe first timers in the IPL or haven't, haven't played a lot of, haven't been around the international scene a lot. Uh, helps you know with someone having international experience as a coach uh, but there is very little time for a coach to do a lot in the IPL. You've spoken to a lot of coaches in your time Sharda. He said there's not much cricket that they can change in this short duration. What are the other roles a coach can do apart from just the cricket that you've seen in, especially in the IPL and the kind of coaches? That I think play? a lot of it has to do like he's saying with sort of man management and practice and, and, and training uh, and what happens in the IPL is this, these franchises have this enormous support staff you know, they're full of people doing various things. There's fielding, there's bowling, there's mental conditioning, which is how Paddy Upton came into yep. uh, Indian cricket. And so there's almost like a support staff. And all support staff have got bigger and bigger. And a lot of coaches will tell you that we don't want so many support staff. We want a very small, tight group, which is, and therefore we don't want 30 people in a, in a you know, franchise signed up and so on. So that is much more important. I had a very interesting conversation last season with someone who worked, not a coach, someone who worked with uh, an IPL team. And he sort of gave a very uh, a good uh, analogy about how it is to deal with uh, players of various nationalities. They said the Indians will come and ask you, okay, what did I do right? What did I do wrong? Uh, to, uh, you've got to go to a West Indian to tell them, okay, listen, this is what is there and this is what we think you should do. Mm. And the Australian will come and sort of brag to you and say, I look good today, didn't I? Mm. And you've got to go to the Kiwi and put their hand down the shoulder and say, okay, you're fine you're doing good so you, and you've got all this this whole sort of uh, almost like a you know melting pot of, of things that's happening there so a coach's job I think is very busy but when it comes to the cricket which is just three and a half hours between uh, a match uh, over a course of uh, yeah. three two months it I, you really don't know how much they can control I mean, well, well I mean they make a lot of differences when they strategize or plan for a game with the captain you know I mean you know that uh, you have to pick just four overseas guys, so you have to get that part right. And a lot of the coaches in IPL are overseas guys who know a lot about the players who play domestically. So that knowledge they bring uh, to the table. If uh, you know, some sometimes because again, you know, the cricket so vast at this point, that sometimes you don't know what a particular player's mm. a player can do. So uh, that that strategy with the captain sometimes become a bigger role than actual coaching during the IPL. Yeah, you know, seven out of eight coaches in this season's IPL uh, are foreign, barring Sanjay Banga for the Kings eleven. What does that tell you, Russell, when you when you look at the kind of people that are coaching in this season's IPL? Sharda mentioned Paddy Upton, who's now head coach, something that he's not done before. He's been uh, an assistant to Gary Kirsten, mental conditioning and all that. The kind of names that we see around. How much? What's this? What's this obsession with the foreign coaches in the IPL? Well, it's probably what uh, they can uh, bring to the table. Now, um, as a coach, I think the key is uh, to identify the strengths and weaknesses of the players that you have. Um, nowadays, uh, ideally, you need to make the team around the Indian players. So their strengths and try and pick up what you can from outside. But more than that, they also need to understand the cultures of different uh, players. That's what Sharda mentioned earlier. Um, how to handle each and every one. So you have to be uh, with an open mind, what you see from outside is not what you see in the inside. Now, the outlook of players that you see on the international stage, but when you go into the dressing room, they're totally different characters. So you, you're going to need a lot of feedback. And if you are on that one track and you like dominating, it's just not going to work. You have to be open minded, uh, be flexible and uh, be smart about it. Who to lay off, who to uh, put the thumb on 
and uh, build your strategies around that. I think it's going to take a lot from the coach uh, to get um, a franchise working, especially in this scenario, in that limited time frame available. Yeah, okay, so we'll just before we continue this, Rajasthan Royals have won the toss in Dubai and they'll be bowling first. We'll give you team news as soon as we can on it. Uh, we'll cut to the, get to the game, but let's just finish this one off. Uh, just speaking to, like you said, the role of the coach in a short tournament or just the six weeks that they've got, we've only seen the one team that's stuck with a coach for a long period of time. Stephen Fleming has been part of Chennai, first as a player, then as a coach. Does that make the job any easier? Does it make it harder? How does that work? Surely it's easier. I mean, you, but again, you know, you're looking at a team who've got a settled squad throughout these six or seven IPLs. So it just makes coaches' job anyway easier. They win a lot more than they lose. Uh, but, the, you know, Chennai thrives on that. Someone who stays in the background, who's not out there as a coach. And, uh, you know, for that particular team, he works. Uh, might not necessarily be the case with some other teams. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, he's been a player who knows the franchise really well, so helps them for sure. I think a journalist would be more open about this. Is it always good to have a coach with the less of an ego or a desire to be in the limelight that helps? Logically, you know, it is. I mean, uh, across uh, sort of formats, uh, particularly in cricket where the coach's role is not as important as it is, say, somewhere in football and so on, that uh, you would want you would want a coach to be sort of, to subsume his ego and just leave it somewhere in the background. Therefore, they tell you that all great players don't necessarily make good uh, coaches. Mm. And uh, Stephen Fleming's example is, I mean, I can be a little bit uh, mischievous here, and Ajit can sort of pretend himself. like he's not listening. Yeah. <laughs> um, is that I, w I would actually be very interested to find out from Stephen Fleming what Gurunath Mayappan's role would have been in Chennai Super Kings <laughs> all these years. If anyone yeah. would know, he would know. Mm. You know. So, uh, but that's that's not to say that he hasn't contributed to the team in in, in whichever way that he has. And what a, a foreign coach also can tend to do is actually uh, give to the captain sort of matchups as to which player is weak or strong against which bowler on his own side, which player on the other side, particularly if they're from their own country or whom they seen and so on. So that's another sort of role uh, that that you know that, that coaches yeah. can play. Another interesting thing is I mean you look at some of the coaches, uh, Russell spoke about the cultures and getting everyone to play together and that's the bigger part of the job. You look at Tom Moody, he's coached Sri Lanka, Trevor, Trevor Bayliss has yeah. coached, John Wright's been with India. Mm -hmm. So they've, they've seen that part and uh, that, that kind of makes it easier for them to sort of slot in the IPL. Uh, because majority of the players are Indian. Okay, well, if anyone can tell us, it'll be Shivlami. If anyone can find out, it's you. So, we're looking forward to you finding out more for us. Interesting that we're talking about... No one in Chennai speaks. No, sorry. No, no one in Chennai <laughs> Super King speaks to anybody outside the team. There Let me know. Just to, is just quiet to, to, Russell? Just to pick up on uh, something I, I did, did mention. Um, just like the coach, he mentioned that the coach might not work for a different team. It's the same with the captain, your personnel, uh, their strengths also reflect in the coach. So different personality, uh, let's say for example, Stephen Fleming might not necessarily work in a different environment because everything around him also matters. He's been good. And another thing that Stephen Fleming can work on is building a bigger squad. He has had that continuity, bringing through youngsters and uh, developing those uh, players that Chennai have been holding now, that he would have been able to achieve a lot more. All right, thank you very much, Russell Arnold and Ajit and Shah, their thoughts on the coaches. That was the big talking point, and good that we had that less than 48 hours in the world of coaching when David Moyes has left Manchester United, alleged mid table club, I think, these days in the Premier League. <laughs> well, we'll leave it for another <laughs> day. Two fans, two fans, two United fans of the show, one's at Skype there. Happy Moyes is gone, Russell. I thought he'd get a little bit more time, though. Yeah. You know, even the players have to look at themselves. Will, will the Mumbai Indians let go of their coach in the same strategy <laughs> then, in the same boat? Not getting the results, off you go. It'll get there. <laughs> it's hotting up, everyone's becoming more experienced, so are the franchise owners. You can see by their selections. It'll get there. In, 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 uh, with due sort of uh, credit to the team that's just left, uh, let a team go, uh, the final word on coaching should come from Sir Alex Ferguson, uh -huh. who actually explained as to how he, he dealt with players at every game. And every time he had to drop a player, he said, uh, I say, look, I might be making a mistake. I always say that. But I think this is the best team for the tournament. So this is the player who's being dropped. He said, it's only tactical. And for a bigger game, you'll be, you'll be the man picked. Excellent. <laughs> well, I mean, He's you know, you know, Ar 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 Arsenal is the only team that sticks to a manager, even if they don't win. <laughs> um, let's move on from there, shall we? This is the uh, cricket IPL. I don't remember on ESPN, Cricket Info, which focuses on cricket. But yeah, that was the talking point.